A few weeks back, I reviewed this device, the One X Player, which is a chonky but still portable 8-inch screener gaming portable device for PC gamers. This is a form factor that's been gaining quite a bit of popularity as of late, especially with the advent of Steam Deck. I only just got my email for that, so I'll be receiving a Steam Deck soon. For now, though, I want to talk about this other device, the One X Player Mini, which is the smaller cousin to the chonky One X Player. This is 7-inch screen and a much more comfortable form factor. Before we delve into that, though, the unboxing experience was pretty standard. Now, you will notice that the theme of this console, this device, is Gundam. And this is a special edition that's only launching in China. But for those who are in the U.S., you can still get the regular One X Player Mini, which has a more standard design. Or you can also import this specific version from China if you so want to. You can go to outlets like eBay and whatnot, but I suspect those prices are not going to be in the realm of comfort for a lot of people. But in the box itself, you'll find the device itself. You'll find a power adapter as well as a USB-C cable. And that's about it. The internal packaging is also themed after Gundam. It's pretty neat. And you can see the look of the device itself is uh, pretty neat. I really like just the color combination here. And as a mech enthusiast, this is definitely kind of cool. I love the red buttons here versus the blue. I love the implementation of the kind of wings here. It's a little flashy, sure, but I feel like overall they've implemented the Gundam design elements tastefully for those who do plan to get this specific edition. But otherwise, you'll be getting a version that looks more like this. This is the regular One X Player. Just imagine a smaller version of this, and that's kind of what the One X Player Mini looks like. This is the Gundam version for those who are interested in that. This specific version has the 12th gen Intel i7-1260P CPU with an integrated Intel Iris Xe GPU. It has 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM. This specific device has a 512 gigabyte internal M2 SSD storage, though you can go up to two terabytes. Dimensions wise, we're definitely looking at a device that's significantly smaller than the original One X player. It is 10 and 1 4th inches sideways. It is four and 1 8 inches tall. And then thickness wise, we're talking about 7 8 of an inch where it's the least thick or the where it's thinnest. And then in the thickest region, we're looking at one and a half inches thick. So pretty portable overall. Obviously, if we compare it to a Nintendo Switch, it's actually, in terms of length at least, it's not too far off. And even height-wise, it's about the same. But as soon as I lean it this way, you can see the significant difference in thickness. And this device, the One X Player Mini, being a full-fledged PC, you kind of need that extra volume to ensure that the thermals are all right. But overall, very portable. The weight in particular is a more comfortable 1.36 pounds versus the original One X Player's 1.8 pounds. And I know that doesn't sound like much of a difference, but keep in mind that you're not like working out with these. You're gonna hold them like this for the better part of an hour, two hours, three hours, depending on how long you're playing. And you want something that doesn't sort of start cramping you up. During that time, with the original One X Player, it was heavy enough that over time, while not unmanageable, you would start to feel your hands cramp up a little bit. It, there is a substantial weight to this, and that reduction of almost 0.5 pounds, just, you can really feel the difference. And as you're playing for extended periods of time, it just becomes a lot less straining to your hands. And beyond that, what the One X Player Mini has that the One X Player doesn't are these grips on the back. While the One X Player does have this kind of protrusion here that allows you to put your fingers on there for a little bit of grip, it's not substantial enough for your fingers to wrap around the back of the device. So it is a little more awkward to use, whereas the One X Player Mini with this kind of bump that's pretty substantial. It just feels a lot more like a traditional controller and it just makes it easier to reach buttons. It makes it easier to make adjustments to your hand position. It just makes for better long-term gameplay, especially with the reduced weight. So form factor wise, this definitely takes a win. It's definitely a more ideal form factor overall, even if I am gonna miss this massive eight inch screen versus the seven inch one over here. There's actually a little more than 
eight inches. This is, what is it? 8.4 inches. So a 1.5 inches reduction in diagonal length makes a difference in surface area, but seven inches for the purposes of portable PC gaming is more than adequate. Now, one thing that I do kind of miss from the One X player is the kickstand, which is very easy to deploy. You can set it down to, I don't know, watch a cutscene play out in the middle of gameplay. You can use it and prop it up as a PC. You can watch a movie on it or something. You can kind of use it as a portable laptop as well as a portable gaming PC with the kickstand implementation. That becomes a little more difficult with this where there's no kickstand, but the screen's smaller and maybe it's less ideal for using it as a computer or watching media on it. So it is what it is. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but I don't know. I just like devices with kickstands in case I need to prop it up. Now all around the device, of course, you'll find various inputs, including the analog sticks, which feel about the same as the One X player here. Pretty good, somewhere between the Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons and a proper Xbox 360 or DualSense controller style analog stick, sort of smack in the middle there. Good enough range of motion for most traditional games and beyond that you've got of course the face buttons and the d-pad i've got to say i do feel an improvement in the way that d-pad and face buttons feel compared to the one x player here the d-pad actually feels a little more tactile i don't know if you can hear it that's what that sounds like versus the original one x player it has this like mushier kind of feel to it where it's harder to discern what direction you're pressing whereas with the one x player mini the D-pad just, it feels a lot more defined when you press a direction, and diagonal inputs register a lot more accurately with this D-pad. Just a significant improvement. It feels a lot more confident when you press a direction. You know you're pressing that direction. As for the face buttons, I had this issue with the One X player where if I held down a button, uh, it would occasionally, if I like, kind of adjusted my thumb a little bit, wiggle the button a little bit, or lighten my press a little bit, it would register that as me letting go and pressing the button again. So in Dark Souls Remastered, where the B button is to sprint, and then pressing it again results in the character jumping, every once in a while my character would accidentally jump because I would wiggle my finger a little bit, and that would be registered as me depressing the button and pressing it again. Whereas with the One X player, not only are the buttons here lighter to press, it just feels like you have to put less sort of pressure to press the buttons while still feeling tactile. I never had that issue of held buttons being registered as a press with a wiggle of a thumb or with me just lightening my press a little bit. It stayed a lot more consistently held. So not only do these buttons feel better, but they're just more responsive in the way I want them to be. Shoulder buttons, fantastic. Nice and clicky. Now the trigger buttons are a real highlight of this device. I don't know if you can hear that clickiness behind it. This is what the One X player sounds like. It just, it, it's a little more resistive to pressing. And while you think that's a good thing because it, maybe it allows for more like adjustments, I feel like it, it's a little too much resistance. Whereas this is a lighter touch while still having that nice clicky sound and still having enough resistance to make finer adjustments for those who prefer that analog input for triggers. The Nintendo Switch, of course, is just, it's just a button which is fine and it works, but uh, you know, for racing games and whatnot, having that analog trigger option is fantastic. And this, I love this, this uh, trigger. It, it reminds me a little bit of the GameCube triggers, which have that nice tactile feel and that nice sort of satisfying sound. Yeah, I love it. Beyond that, you've got the start and select buttons, which are nice and clicky, easy to reach, but small and out of the way enough where you're not gonna press them accidentally. And down here, you've got a number of one X player specific buttons. The orange button brings you directly to desktop, then holding down this button and then pressing the keyboard button brings up this menu so you can bring out the task manager. You can also take a screenshot by holding down the orange button and then pressing the turbo button. You can see the screen flash there for a second. And then the keyboard button brings up the built-in keyboard, which through a third party program, you can change to the more mobile keyboard kind of Windows 10 implemented keyboard. That's a lot better than this one, but this has more buttons. You know, it has like escape and tab and all this stuff over here. So you can switch back and forth whenever you feel like it. And then I can press the home button here to go back to desktop. And then this, this is the button that will turn on turbo mode, which means that the device is just blasting the fans and going at full capacity. So you get the most performance out of the device. Now on one X player, I liked the way that the turbo button you can see right here lit up. And so you know that the turbo is on, or if you hold it down again, you know it's off based on the light there. Whereas with the One X Player Mini, the light here is only for whether you're in X input mode, 
which currently you are because this light isn't on, or whether you're in keyboard and mouse mode by holding down this button, you can see the light is on now, which means I can use the analog stick to control the mouse, and this is escape, this is enter, and it becomes more of a keyboard and mouse kind of situation. I can turn that off, and we're back to X input Xbox controller mode. So there's a light for that, but there's no light for turbo, so I have to kind of like put it up to my ears and listen to for the fans. And while one of the devices I don't like, this is actually impossible to tell whether you're in turbo mode or not. Actually, I just decided to boot up control so you can see for yourself how the fan noise differentiates. So right here, if I put this up next to me, you can kind of hear that there is not much happening in terms of fan noise, but as soon as I hold down the button and press it, you can hear the fans kind of kick into gear, and that's when you know the turbo mode is on, and you're gonna get the best performance out of this. Now, one advantage that the One X Player Mini has over this One X Player, at least, the one that I got with the 5700U, is gyroscopic aiming. And once you get it set up, you can see that it works. So you can see right here, during a combat encounter and control, I can uh, grab this chair right here, move the, move the device around like that, aim like so, and then kind of move the device around to take some shots, and, once you get it running, yeah, it's really cool. This is one of my favorite ways to play games. Yeah, I can, like, actually move the device around. Like so. I can take this guy and take a couple shots like that. You can make these, like, fine minor adjustments. Like that. And I'm not even holding down the analog sticks. I'm just... I'm just moving the, uh... The device around. Now that's all well and good, but one issue with the One X Player Mini is that One X Player doesn't have native gyro support or drivers that allow the gyros to be interpreted as data for platforms like Steam to use or for emulators to be able to take advantage of. So I had to download this third-party software called Handheld Companion, which is a community-made software for devices like INEO and also supporting uh, One X Player and One X Player Mini. That software isn't perfect, but it does pretty well for what it is. The program essentially emulates right analog stick camera movement, and you can even set whether it's always on, whether you have to like hold down a certain button before the gyro turns on and stuff like that. And then it also allows you to emulate a PlayStation 4 controller so that Steam picks it up as a PlayStation 4 controller, then allows you to actually use the gyro functionality because in traditional X input mode, X input doesn't actually support gyro. And so having the option to emulate a PlayStation 4 controller allows Steam to take advantage of the gyro functionality. But the implementation of the software of Handheld Companion and how it integrates into Steam, it takes a lot of finagling and just in general, setting up gyros on this device just takes one too many steps for it to work properly. And so I'd love to see One X Player eventually implement software for better support to be able to adjust things. I even encountered an issue where this device's gyroscope was mounted differently than other One X players. And so Handheld Companion was interpreting the motions differently. Horizontal was vertical, vertical was horizontal, so there was a lot of tweaking involved to make sure that the gyroscope on this worked properly. And even when it does, it's still not quite at 100%, not quite as good as when I was using the Steam controller with Steam on my PC. But at the very least, the gyroscope is there. It's just going to take a bit of time to get there, but it's definitely better than not having it at all. At the very least, down the line, I'll be able to look forward to hopefully better gyroscopic solutions. But there are some that are out there for now. And the last but not least for input, you've got the power button right here to turn on the device or turn it off or put it to sleep. You've got the volume rockers here, plus and minus. Now let's talk a bit about outputs. You got the speakers here, which are okay. They're a bit thin. They don't feel super substantial. They're nothing to write home about, but they're more than adequate enough for gaming without headphones. Though, if you want a more immersive experience, put on some headphones. These speakers are just Fine. The device also comes with some rumble as the One X Player did. It's actually better than the One X Player. This one felt more like a smartphone vibration kind of rumble. This has a bit more punch, a bit of a bassier vibration. Still not the best per se, but definitely more usable than the one on the One X Player. And then of course we got to talk about the screen, which is seven inches diagonal. And what that means from the One X Player, the smaller screen means higher pixel density. And so you can set the graphic settings lower and the flaws of that will show less. It also means lower resolutions are more viable. 1280 by 800 resolution, that suddenly won't make a huge difference when you're dealing with a 7-inch device with 
that much higher of a pixel density compared to the 8.4 inches where when you kind of scale down the resolution you can notice a little more blurriness than on this device so for me the seven inches size diagonal is probably the ideal size for a device like this as great as it is to have an 8.4 inch massive screen where you can see more but maybe you see too much when you're at a point in this technology where you can't run games at 1080p resolution with this form factor chips are still catching up to get there but we're definitely getting there it's an ips screen it does get bright enough for your average use it's not the best screen in the world i do wish it was oled for those punchier blacks and better contrast so the colors pop more and all that but for your average gaming sessions this ips screen will do just fine there is a bit of backlight bleed on this one sort of towards the top left area of the screen that's one of the things about ips screens is that it's kind of the luck of the draw some screens really have barely any light bleed other units will have more light bleed showing this has got a max resolution of 1900 by 1200 i scale it down to 1650 by 1050 that's the highest i'll go when it comes to resolution on a screen this small you really don't notice that much of a difference you get diminishing returns as you increase the resolution with more demanding games i of course lower that to 1280 by 800 and it works just fine. Oh, one last thing about input is, of course, touchscreen implementation. So if there are games that use touchscreen or you prefer to navigate Windows using the touchscreen, you can do so pretty well. Pretty responsive touchscreen overall. And last but not least, before we delve into performance, we got some ports to discuss. At the bottom, you've got a USB-C port. I love this implementation. The One X player had two USB-C ports up top and none at the bottom. With this implementation on the One X player mini, you can decide to charge from the bottom or from the top, depending on where you are, depending on what the situation calls for. That's a really great and neat advantage to have. And then beyond that on top, you've got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You've got a second USB-C and you've got a USB-A, which you may notice is occupied by a USB plug for a micro SD card. And that's because, and I'm a little perplexed by this, this device, the One X Player Mini, does not come with a micro SD card reader, unlike the big One X Player here, which had the micro SD card slot. And so what that means is that to expand your storage, one of your USB slots has to be used in such a fashion. Now, because this is USB 3.0, the micro SD card actually loads games faster through this implementation. The SD card reader on the One X player was actually kind of slow. I said in my review for this device that loading times weren't that different turns out I was wrong about that but at the same time one X player also has that USB a and so you could for faster loading add a micro SD card through the USB 3.0 port here and also have extra storage through the built-in micro SD card slot I really wish this device had a fast micro SD card reader built in because not only does it take up the USB a but also makes the device less convenient to carry around because you've got this thing sticking out now you can't put it in cases as handily you kind of have to take this out keep it somewhere safe and then plug it back in and I had no trouble taking this out and plugging it back in and then all the games still being read by steam and whatnot that's not an issue it's just the fact that you have to have this extra device just to have extra storage and this version that I got is a 512 gigabyte SSD so unless you get the two terabyte version where you know it's going to be a lot more expensive but you won't require that extra bit of storage yeah you're going to kind of have to use a device like this with this little extra thing sticking out kind of inconvenient so yeah the omission of a micro SD card slot is a bit of a bummer on this one and that brings us to performance I have played games in the lower range of graphical fidelity and in the higher range I've also emulated a bunch of stuff and here are the results that I got now because this is an Intel chip with an Intel integrated GPU some of the results were less consistent because some games just don't support Intel drivers like they support Nvidia and AMD drivers so it's a bit hit or miss on that front but the games that do run well and do support Intel well enough performed quite well so here's how things break down starting with Hades at 1680 by 1050 resolution it pretty much ran perfectly consistent 60 FPS no real substantial frame rate drops Dark Souls remastered 1680 by 1050 60 FPS also pretty much runs perfectly Batman Arkham Origins I played at 1680 by 1050 at 60 frames per second with DX 11 enhancements off and there was no hitches whatsoever now I did want to test whether I could max the graphics keep all the DX 11 enhancements on reduce the resolution and still get good frame rates and I did just add reduce 
reduce the resolution to 1280 by 800 and got 50 to 60 frames per second average still very smooth and very playable witcher 3 i took the resolution down to 1280 by 800 i got an average of 35 to 45 frames per second i'd say about 40 frames per second average overall very playable about the same as the one x player amd 5700u which has a last generation chip now metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain this game performed admirably on this device definitely perform better than this uh, old 1x player AMD version that I have at 1280 by 800 resolution it actually mostly ran at 60 frames per second maybe a few divs into 55 frames per second but we're talking about high settings very smooth experience overall 1x player AMD 5700U version I ran it at 1280 by 800 resolution and it was medium to high settings and I was getting more divs it was still running fairly smoothly at say like 55 frames per second average but even with some of the settings turned down to medium instead of high it was usually hovering at 55 frames per second on the Intel version on this 12th gen Intel 1x player mini the the smaller device was running Metal Gear Solid 5 at mostly 60 with some dips to 55. Next up we got control I ran this game at 1280 by 800 and saw frame rates fluctuate quite a bit anywhere from 30 to 50 frames per second I'd say 40 seconds average on low settings very playable overall death stranding is up next at 1280 by 720 resolution this is a game that definitely does not have good intel chip support it was running at a stuttery 25 frames per second average even on the lowest settings i wouldn't say this was particularly playable i would definitely not play death stranding on this device outer wilds also ran a little worse than on the last gen one x player 5700u at 1280 by 800 resolution the frame rate fluctuated between 25 to 50 frames per second depending on which area i was in how graphically intensive things were in an area and where i was looking i'd say 35 frames per second average on medium settings whereas on the older 1x player the big chunkier 1x player 5700u i got 30 to 50 frames per second usually 40 frames per second average at medium settings so just it edges out the performance of the mini device moving on tunic i could play at 1280 by 800 resolution at 60 frames per second everything maxed out i could even boost the resolution up to 1680 by 1050 resolution and max setting and still get a 55 to 60 frames per second experience some dips here and they're not as smooth I'd still play it at 1280 by 800 because the smaller screen doesn't make the low resolution a big deal. Hellblade Senua Sacrifice, 1280 by 800, 40 to 50 frames per second average outdoors, 50 to 60 frames per second average indoors, medium settings. I could actually turn on AMD Fidelity FX, and that was doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And yeah, even at high and very high settings, I saw frame rates above 30 frames per second, relatively playable frame rates overall. So Hellblade, I'd say, runs fairly well on this device. Resident Evil 3 Remake, I wouldn't say is as viable on this device. 1280 by 800. I got 25 to 30 frames per second outdoors, 30 to 50 frames per second indoors. So not very smooth, worse than on the One X player AMD. And this is medium settings we're talking about. Monster Hunter Rise, however, ran super well. Even at 1080 by 1050 resolution, it mostly ran at 60 frames per second. Maybe a few minor dips and hiccups here and there. And if you lower it to 1280 by 800, you're going to get straight up just a smooth 60 frames per second. And it's not going to make a huge difference, again, because of the higher pixel density and smaller screen size. Halo Infinite at 720p ran, I'd say, at a stuttery 25 to 35 frames per second. And there were a good amount of graphical issues and... Halo Infinite actually tells you that for now they're not supporting Intel chips and so that would explain why it feels like the game just hasn't been well optimized for this. So even at low settings, 25 to 35 frames per second, I'd say it's not an ideal way to play Halo Infinite. It's like decently playable enough, but I would prefer not to. Cyberpunk 2077 is a graphically demanding game, and because the Intel chip doesn't have the AI upscaling to take advantage of, in this game at least, at 1280 by 800 resolution, I was getting a 20 to 25 frames per second average, even at low settings. So I would say the game is not particularly playable on this device with the current driver support. Elden Ring, 1280 by 800 resolution I could play at 25 to 35 frames per second average I'd say playable overall uh, with a bit of a stuttery feeling as long as the frame rate is like in the 30 frames per second region 
uh, you can definitely get away with uh, playing the game on this device, though... Again, I would like to see just better driver support. And last but not least, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy just won't even boot up on this device. I kept getting a noticeable D3, D12 error, something that I didn't get on the AMD chip, the 5700U on the old big 1X player. So that's a game that I couldn't test out. So you can see that there's a lot of variance there. Some games actually did outperform the old 1X player. Others, because of a lack of proper driver support for Intel graphics chips, just ran nowhere near as well you could tell that the game was not optimized for this chip and so hopefully that support will get better over time but with the current state of things if there was a version of one x player mini to get i would recommend the amd version the 5800u version which is a little better than the 5700u housed here and you get it in a smaller form factor so for now until intel support gets better that's a version that i'd recommend for more modern day games though for last gen games you know xbox 360 air games and for emulation which we'll get to in a bit this device is actually pretty perfect and runs those games beautifully so with emulation this device ran citra the 3ds emulator much better than the big 1x player did because the 1x player has amd chips and vulcan is better supported for amd and turns out that citra and vulcan just don't jive very well is something that i learned recently so the 1x player mini because of its intel chip actually runs citra much better there's just better support for it seemingly and so playing games like majora's master the Ocarina of Time 3D and Metroid Samus Returns, it ran very smoothly, perfect 30 frames per second, which is the frame rate that they play at on the 3DS. It was just smooth as butter, whereas on the old 1X player here, uh, yeah, that one, you could tell everything just felt a little stuttery and that it wasn't running at full speed. Then we got PlayStation 2 emulation on the PC SX2, and everything ran perfectly. I tried Devil May Cry 3, Silent Hill 2, both ran flawlessly, and any game compatible with PC SX2 will run well on this device. Same for GameCube, Wii emulation on Dolphin, Metroid Prime Trilogy, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, you name it. Everything just ran beautifully. Once again, any game that runs well on Dolphin will run well on this device. I tested out some Wii U emulation via Simu, Zelda Twilight Princess, Wind Waker HD, Super Mario 3D World, Tokyo Mirage Sessions FE, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Also, all pretty much ran flawlessly, and Breath of the Wild ran better on this device than it did on Switch, running at 40 to 45 frames per second average outdoors and 60 frames per second average indoors inside those shrines and whatnot. You can increase the frame rate limit of Breath of the Wild via a cheat that you can apply to Simu to run Breath of the Wild that way. And when you do so, this device just does beautifully, just feels significantly smoother to play on the One X Player Mini than it does on the Switch, funny enough, and this is why I love emulation. You can take games that you already own and enhance that experience further. And last but not least, Switch emulation on Yuzu. So I decided to run Zelda Breath of the Wild on it just to try it out, even though Simu will run it much better. Surprisingly, this device had a locked 30 frames per second, though there were graphical glitches in the used emulation that made it just not an ideal experience. It is actually better than on the 5700U 1X player, which ran the game at 25 to 30 frames per second. Often the frame rate would fluctuate in the 25 frames. On the 1X player mini with the Intel chip, it stayed locked at 30 frames. That still just boot up Breath of the Wild on Simu to play it at even higher frame rates. The Xenoblade Chronicles Remaster ran at a solid 30 frames per second. Kirby Forgotten Land, solid 30 frames per second. Astro Chain ran at 30 frames per second. Paper Mario Origami King ran super well. Just a great way to emulate Switch games all around, both in form factor and the fact that it has enough power to run games that are compatible for use and run well on yuzu so on the emulation territory i'm a big fan of this device it's actually even better than on the big chonky 1x player citra especially runs a lot better on this device and breath of the wild on yuzu actually ran better on this device than it did on the 1x player so when it comes to emulation this device actually does edge out the 1x player on a number of fronts now with any device that can run high-end games and especially on a basically computer like this you're going to be dealing with fan noise and thermals and whatnot. I've got to say the fan noise on this device is very adequate. You can hear it, but it's not this annoying high pitch kind of noise. It's actually more of like a hum that 
is audible but kind of blends into the background the speakers are loud enough to overtake the fan noise it never gets annoying it's noticeable but never in the way and the device never got hot enough to be uncomfortable i never found this device throttling super hard or anything it only got kind of warm sort of on the top section top middle section here but your hands are nowhere near that when you're holding the device like this the grips never got warm or anything i was really satisfied with the thermal performance of this device and the comfort factor of this device on that front you just never have to worry about the device's temperature from what i can tell now how long are you going to be able to play games for on this device well it does come with a 12,450 milliamp hour battery and i tested dark souls 1 remastered turbo on and just basically ran this device on full force for as long as i could and the device lasted an hour and 40 minutes it was 50 percent brightness so yeah it's decent but obviously not ideal battery performance is probably the biggest challenge that these kinds of portable pc gaming devices face the steam deck also has fairly low battery life overall so just making that more efficient will be a high priority goal now, if you turn turbo off and turn on battery power or battery saver on and leave the device at 20% brightness, I played Vampire Survivors, a relatively not super demanding game, except for when things get really crazy on screen, and running it at basically as low profile as I could. And at that setting, emphasizing battery life over power, I managed to squeeze three hours and 30 minutes out of this gaming experience. And the best solution right now to extend battery life is to get yourself a good battery bank. This one right here outputs enough power to be able to charge a device like the One X Player Mini or this big chonky One X Player. And that can almost triple my battery life. So I could play Dark Souls Remaster for roughly four and a half to five hours. And I could play Vampire Survivors for, I'd say about 10 hours. So there are definitely options out there, but you'll just have to carry something extra around. But not the worst compromises when you have the ability to play decently high-end games on a form factor like this and emulate games beautifully on a device like this. And one thing to keep in mind is that with these devices, you can usually download a software that allows you to manually set the TDP of this device, how much power you draw from the chips. So you can go from like 5 watts to 35 watts. And, you know, depending on what you're playing on this device, you can change that, lower that, or raise that to get more power, or more battery life, so you can fine-tune things that way, but that requires you to kind of uh, be a little more proactive about that kind of stuff. To close things off, let's talk about the value of this device, an important factor in a landscape that's getting more and more competitive. So I've said before, the Gundam version is not going to be shipping to the U.S. because of a licensing deal. They only have the rights to publish this Gundam-themed one X Player Mini in China, and that costs 8,000 yuan or $1,200 for the one terabyte version, or 9,000 yuan or $1,350 for the two terabyte version. Your only option to get the Gundam version specifically with this design is to import it, and that's going to run at an even higher price. So I wouldn't recommend that. What I would recommend is to look into the AMD Mini 5800U version, which just has better driver support for more modern games. And as far as that one's concerned, it's still not cheap. That version of the device ranges from 512 gigabytes, 1280 by 800 screen, starting at $1,230 or $1,230. And that goes all the way up to a two terabyte version that supports 1920 by 1200 resolution. And that'll set you back $1,600. And that's one area where this device just cannot compete with the Steam Deck, whose highest price for a 512 gigabyte SSD version and with all the features that it comes with and the power that it comes with uh, it's being sold at $650 max and there's the $400 version which you can add a micro SD card to to expand that storage so you're just spending a lot less money on the Steam Deck on the flip side though devices like One X Player are readily available for purchase Whereas the Steam Deck, if you haven't pre-ordered, then you're going to be waiting months for that device to ship, months for supply to catch up with demand. So for those who do have a few extra hundred dollars to spare and want a portable PC gaming experience, there's plenty of good competition out there. And the One X Player Mini, form factor-wise, I'd say is 
the perfect device that One X Player has produced. Just don't get Intel versions, I'd say, until driver support gets better. But if emulation and last gen games are more your focus, then this will do you just fine. It's still quite capable and powerful for the stuff the drivers are good for. So if you're not in a hurry, I would recommend that you wait for the next generation of devices that are coming. Specs wise could actually surpass Steam Deck but in terms of how the chips are optimized to perform and all these things, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But devices of that caliber of, you know, 6,000 series AMDs, that's coming. And so I'd say maybe wait a couple months, hold out for that. Though if you're in a hurry, you know, this is definitely not a bad device at all. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is everything you need to know about the One X Player Mini, specifically the Gundam version. I hope this video was useful in allowing you to make a choice on whether this kind of device is the right one for you, whether the One X Player is the right portable PC for you. Plenty of options out there. And, uh, the AMD version of this, I'd say, is very, very recommendable. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on this form factor. Do you see a future here? Uh, do you own one? And what's your experience been like with owning a One X Player or Steam Deck or an INE or whatever? And uh, are you excited for this form factor to become more normalized? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out.